welcome to Boggy Box Craft. I'm Debra, and today I've got a garden haul for you because I finally left the house and went straight to the garden centre. So I thought I would share my little gardening shopping haul with you guys. So the first load of items are from Dobby's and then some items from B&Q. I mean, one item from B&Q. It's a really good item and I'm really excited for it for in the garden. So the first thing I got from Dobby's was set onions. They've got four different types of onions and they're all onion sets as well. So in each of these packs there's 50 onions and these were £2.49 each. So we've got electric onions, they're a red onion. I really wish these things had more pronounceable names. <laughs> How am I going to pronounce this? We've got a yellow onion. Sen shui, shen shu, sen shu, sen shi, shu yu. I don't know how to pronounce these, but sen shu, yellow onions. They look nice, don't they? They look like they've got lots of potential. We've got radar onions and autumn champion onions. So all these onions are for autumn planting. So I'm quite excited to try that out. Next up, I found some climbing French beans. Johnson's climbing French beans in speckled cranberry. They look really cool, don't they? I've never seen beans this colour before. I mean, I've tried Shiraz Mange too before. They're like a really deep burgundy wine colour. They're beautiful and they've got most beautiful pink flowers. But I've never tried these before. And um, it does say they're new to Johnson's. Obviously Johnson's the brand. So we won't plant this right now. I've just bought them because they looked really nice. How much were these? Can't see anything on this. Gosh, maybe I need to get glasses. So these were £2.85. I don't think that's just too bad for such an unusual looking bean. I'm quite excited to try these. Obviously I won't be planting these until next year. So apparently I can sow between April and July and harvest between July and October. Well, we'll see about that. They look like they'd be easy enough to grow. <laughs> but since we live in Scotland, let's not speak too soon. We shall wait till next spring and find out what these are like then. So I have started growing flowers. This is my first year growing flowers, as some of you may know. Some of it's gone really well, some of it not so much. We did have a few misses with the sunflowers and the wind and the weather, but Hi Scotland, I see you there. My Himalayan blue poppies, my Chinese lantern and my hollyhocks and my passion fruit flower. None of those have flowered this year, but I think because I've grown them from seed, now the plant's established, we'll get flowers next year. Hopefully. <laughs> maybe, maybe not, I don't know. We'll find out next year. The next thing I got was tulips. I've never grown tulips before. So this is tulips the tall collection, because I'm not tall, so maybe I can have flowers that are tall. Saying that though, the height on this is 45 centimetres. Is that tall for a tulip? I don't know. I've never grown a tulip before, but I seen the picture on the front and I thought, they're pretty, I'll get some of those. So what do we get in here? 20 bulbs? How much were these? Oh wow, so these were 7 99 Is that a lot for flowers? It recommends lifting them and then planting them again. Am I really going to do that? Probably not. I'll just probably just plant them and we'll see how it goes. And if we need to lift them, move them around and store them and all that jazz, I don't know if I'll be doing that. Maybe, maybe I'll have more enthusiasm for it next year. So we can plant these from August onwards as well. I think I'm just gonna dot them all around the garden. I'm not sure where I'm gonna put them yet. Ideal for borders. My whole garden's a border. So I got a little bit carried away with the flower situation and found these two. We'll start with these. It's an iris. I'm not going to try to say this name down here because, hmm, I would butcher it. Look how pretty they are. They're lovely. Okay, and there's only nine bulbs, but you can leave these ones on the ground and apparently they'll regrow every year, which is ideal. Because one can sometimes be a lazy gardener because life. People are busy. We don't have time to like, lift bulbs and do all the things. We just want the garden to be beautiful. As much as possible, you know. Holler if you agree, you know. Ooh, ideal for naturalizing. Never heard it called that before. I thought it was just per being perennials. Is that what it's called? Ideal for naturalizing, in brackets, leaving in for flowers year after year, close bracket, in rockeries and edge of borders, also suitable for containers. Huh. 
and again plant from August in fact all of the flowers I got are plant from August onwards so I shall be planting them sometime soon and lastly I've got these tulip little beauties how pretty are they they're super pretty aren't they so these are a special miniature variety oh 10 centimeters high just itty ditty oh they're going to get dwarfed by the rest of the garden aren't they don't worry i'll put some in pots and we can enjoy them that way instead <laughs> cute although saying that now i thought this before bought it and then when they grow and you look at them you think oh it's not quite how i thought they would be either i haven't realized how small the flower is or how big they're going to be but i'm new to this flower gardening business so yeah we're just gonna enjoy the journey okay so both the iris and the tulips were 4.99 they flower april to may and they're february to march so at least i'll have a bit of color in my garden to start with again scottish weather it's probably going to be more March with the cold here, but looking forward to those. So we'll get them planted in a little oily. And on the subject of flowers, I got these. Can we just appreciate how beautiful these are? They don't even look real. They look like paper. I think they're called Dianthus Flutterburst. Flutterburst? <laughs> Hi, plant friend. Who doesn't need a plant called Flutterburst in their garden? I was like, now dudes, with a name like that, you're gonna have to come home and live with us. So these were 4 99 but I would say these were just so worth it. What does it say about these guys? Flutterburst, I mean, honestly, just the best name. Flowering spring to autumn, links full sun. So I'll pop links to everything I've shown you in this video if I can find them in the description box below. Next up, I found this. If anyone out there has hydrangeas, you'll know, they just either come in pink or blue. Even if you've bought them one color, whatever style you have, they'll just turn the color they want. So I stumbled across this, hydrangea colorant. Why do hydrangeas change color? So the hydrangeas flowers can change by adjusting the pH of your soil. So when the soil is alkaline, the flowers are pink, and the soil is acidic, they're blue. Apparently we're making the soil more acidic. We will find out if you work, shall we? Because both my hydrangeas are pink. <laughs> they're in pots as well, and it does say I can do that with this. So it's by Westland, hydrangea colorant. Changes pink hydrangeas to blue. How much were you? 5 99 So I don't know if this will work this time of year, but I'll be trying out this in the next few garden videos I upload. And you will be able to see if this works on my hydrangeas and it changes them to a blue colour. We can find out together. Next up, gloves! Who doesn't like a nice gardening glove? So I got this triple pack. I think these were like 9 99 There was other ones there that had lemons on them and they were like, I think it was a pack of three for like five or six pound. But then I seen these ones and they've got flamingos on them. Of course I'm going to pick the ones with flamingos. I can't believe I got excited about gardening gloves, but here we are. One minute you're young and cool, the next minute you're turning down the car stereo to see better. We've got three pairs. Obviously it's a pack of three. And inside they've got these little grips. I don't know why I'd want grips on, oh, I'm sure I, uh, grips are useful, I'm sure. I'm pretty sure the soil just sticks to everything. Oh, they're nice. Obviously they're not waterproof, these are just cotton. But I think it just protects your hands when you're out digging in the garden, doing your thing. Obviously I've got nails to protect, so it's a necessity as it's not. Although I'm quite renowned for digging in the garden and not giving wooden jot about what my nails are doing to the sadness of my poor nail tech, bless her. I don't know how she deals with me and my nails. So two of the pairs seem to have these pink bands here and these ones have got white. But the glove part seems to be exactly the same on each of these. So they're briars and a medium. High grip, comfort fit, stretch cuff. Love these. I have had ones like these before and they're good. I can also paint in them without my hands getting like... Sometimes if gloves are too waterproof, your hands can get really sweaty and that's not enjoyable. So yeah, I quite like the cotton gloves. On to the next thing. Now, I know this isn't gardening, but I thought I would just share it with you anyway. <laughs> Got a spatula, because winter is coming. We've all done a lot of baking in lockdown, so my spatula is a bit destroyed. My old spatula. Seen this, I thought this is really cute. Although, did not realize how expensive this was. 6 99 and it's called a dough scraper. 6 99 is that a lot for this? 
she says after spending a gazillion pounds over the years on the garden, 6 99 is not going to break the bank. Just such a lovely baby pink. It's nearly like a hint of lavender on the handle. I really like this. The spatula is from the Berkman Company. Don't know why I've added this in, but here you go. Spatula. This is probably another one of those little cute items that, did I need it? Probably not. Do the birds need it? Absolutely. Have you ever seen such a cute bird feeder? What do you think of the bird feeder? Okay, well you should lie yourself in there. Compact squirrel proof seed feeder. That's a really tongue twisty thing to say. Can that just say bird feeder? That would be easier. Where I live, I don't think I've ever seen a squirrel. I don't know if I have to really worry about it being squirrel safe. I don't know if that'll help you guys. I won't be able to tell you if it is actually squirrel safe when I use it. You like it too. I seen this and I thought, yes, I need that. The birds will appreciate that. Also, it's purple, quite a lightish purple, like pastely purple. I think it's really cute. And I'll be able to see it in the trees a little bit more easily. I don't know how that helps the birds either. But I just thought it was cute for in the garden. And some of my feeders are looking pretty rusty now. There's the dimensions. 15 centimeters by 11.5 centimeters. So it is quite dinky, very cute. How many times have I said cute in this video? Too many, I would suspect. Holds 250 grams of seeds. And this was only 4.99. I think that's a pretty good bargain, isn't it? I mean, obviously we'll have to see how well it wears because they live outside, obviously. They're always going to rust. So that's everything I got from Dobby's. I then went to B&Q. I got this, an electric hedge trimmer. Yep. <laughs> it's by Bosch. What do you think of the hedge trimmer? Do you like it? No? Are you excited for trimming the hedge? That'll be a no then. I want to say this was about £73. It's an electric hedge trimmer. It weighs 2.7 kilos. It is lightweight. It's got 450 watt high power. So Andy does have a petrol hedge trimmer thing. <laughs> I find it far too heavy to actually use. I'm also a little bit terrified of it because I'm a bit clumsy and I'd be a little bit frightened that I just injured myself while using it or cut a whole chunk out the hedge that I didn't mean to. So I thought maybe it's time to invest in electric hedge trimmer that's light enough for me to lift and make our hedges a little bit prettier. Let's open her up. It's like Christmas already, isn't it? Oh, here she is. And if it's too heavy to lift out the box, that's a bad sign. But it isn't. Zing, zing, zing. Obviously I'm not gonna plug it in because we're inside. Do we need an instruction manual? Probably. Safety, 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 safety. She is an AHS 550-16. She's a hedge cutter and she is powerful. Oh, and it's got pictures. That makes things life so much easier. I love a picture. Okay, okay, so this is how we cut the hedge. Zing, 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 zing. Okay, lovely. I think we'll reserve judgment until we see me actually trying to cut the hedge with this. Anyway, it's enough about that. We don't need instructions. What I will say is I think I've got a good amount of lead here, but I will probably need to use an extension cable with this. 97 decibels. We might need some ear protectors as well. Obviously, if you're going to get a hedge trimmer, use safety precautions. Be careful. These are quite dangerous things. So be careful, you know? It does come with a safety shield over the blades that just slides off. So we're gonna keep that on right now. Handle here for grip. Handle here for grip. I just practicing, you know. Because I've never used one of these before. I think it's just gonna take a little bit of practice for the weight and the action for the hedge trimming. So here's my nice, beautiful new Bosch hedge trimmer. And I think this one is supposedly for medium jobs. Hedge trimmer, seeds, bird feeders. We're ready for autumn and winter. So if you've enjoyed this gardening haul, leave a like, leave a comment, and tell me which item is your favorite, or let me know what you will be buying to see you through the autumn and winter for the garden. Subscribing is of course optional, but it is very much appreciated. And feel free to share this video with anyone that you think might find it useful or entertaining. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.
see the dog's party, do you know that? I can smell it from it and I can smell it from here. What has he been eating? Ugh. Oh, that's a dog slip in the background. So, can you hear that? Is he dreaming? That's him, that's him dreaming. It's a dreamy dog noise. Is he done? Apparently that's all the dreams there are for today. <laughs> We've been for our walk today, so the dogs are having a nice nap now while I get on with the things. Are you coming to join me? Was you dreaming? Come on then, up you come. Come on then, you coming up. Did you hear me say birds? Did you? Excellent. Are you good there? Were you dreaming? Were you? Was you having a dreamy nighty snoozy snooze? 